Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to go about fitting a set of braided brake lines, both front and rear, to the SV1000. These uh, braided lines are from Hell Performance, and as you can see, I've opted for the uh, silver finish. It's like a, it's got a plastic coating on it, st um, stainless steel fittings on the end, um, and they've been uh, heat shrunk. That was an option, uh, and as you can see, they, they, you know, they look quite, uh, quite attractive. And don't forget, obviously, you get a set of stickers in the package. That's all important. Um, here's the rear one. Obviously, the two longer ones are the front. And all the hardware we require to mount them up to the uh, both the calipers and the master cylinders. So, let's um, get into it. Okay, before we begin and uh, crack any of the brake lines off, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the cap off the reservoir for the rear one, because we're starting with the rear brake. cap off there's a little diaphragm came off with it give them a good clean before we put them back on and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to suck out the brake fluid from inside the reservoir the reason I'm doing this is just because it's a lot cleaner than just cracking off the the banjo at the line and just letting it spill all over the place I don't particularly want it dripping all over the uh, painted surfaces of the bike and then I'm just going to stick it in my little jar that says dirty brake fluid ready for disposal later I won't get it all out but it's it's a start you know just helps avoid making such a mess right. so that's the reservoir pretty much empty and what I'm going to do now is set about taking the the line off the bike now in order to get at the banjo here the best thing to do is probably remove the the rear set there's a spring uh, and a few bolts and then a bolt on this bracket here and then the whole thing will come off and then we'll be able to get to the back of it and then obviously the other end of the banjo is literally on the caliper here so that's what we'll uh, that's what we'll do next I'll go and get some spanners out and we'll uh, we'll start taking it off Right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo the bolt on the back of this bracket where it uh, fits to the heel plate and it's just a 10mm bolt. There we go, that's that one removed. Next I just want to remove the two bolts holding the rear set to the frame. These are probably going to be quite tight. Yep, they're pretty tight. There's a little breaker bar I can't handle. Gives me the opportunity to give this rear set a good clean as well because it's absolutely bogging. There we 
you go. That's two. And then what we've got is this little spring just here, which is going to be awkward to get into. But it does need to come off. spring off and then the bolt at the top for the mat for the reservoir that one's not too bad Obviously, I need to be careful because there is a little bit of fluid still left inside. And then we've got another spring for the rear brake just there. Okay, right. What I'm going to do, get my little jar for the waste fluid and just tip the remainder of the fluid into it. There we are. We haven't spilled a drop yet. So, now we can see the back of the banjo on the back of the rear set. So we can get into that, crack that off, and then crack the one off on the, on the caliper, and then we can take the line off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, get some tissue, some workshop tissue, and I'm just going to use that to catch any drips that I, uh, that obviously I will encounter. Okay, as you can see, the back of this is absolutely bogging, so it's well worth uh, it's well worth giving it a clean while it's off. Um, on the uh, on the banjo itself, 12 millimeter, and then just crack her off. Now we will lose a bit of fluid out the line here, so I've got my rag. Even if I wasn't changing these uh, these brake lines, I'd imagine. That this fluid is probably well overdue a change anyway. Okay. So there's the old washer and the old banjo, the other the other washer's still on the banjo. Let's pop that to one side, because I'm gonna give it a clean in a bit before we put it back on. And then there we go, there's the end of the line. Right, now what we're gonna do is get into the uh, get into the caliper end. Okay, obviously the other banjo on the caliper at the other at the other end of the uh, the other end of the line. I'm going to stick a bit of my rag underneath it just to catch any drips, and then I can get into the banjo. There we go. fingers there's the banjo put that one over there with the other and then the line is there so there we have it let's get cut those drips there and there so what I'll do get my jar again just make sure that was Nothing left in it, otherwise it will just sit there dripping out onto whatever I put it on. So, there we go. So, there we are. That's the, uh, that is the line removed. So, what I'm going to do um, is obviously I need to get the, uh, the other one out of the box, the new one out of the box. Um, but I'm going to give the, uh, the rear set a good clean up. Once I've done that, I'll bring you all back in for the reassembly. Right, 
here we have the uh, the whole of the rear set. As you can see, it's all nice and clean now. I uh, took it all apart and then threw it through the uh, through through the ultrasonic cleaner, and it's come up uh, quite nice. So what I need to do uh, next, obviously, is uh, look at the actual line itself. So this is the rear one. Um, the actual ends, the actual banjo ends, are, as you can see, kinked off in a in in a certain direction. This one kinks off sideways, and this one kinks off that way, and that is the way that it's fitted and obviously they've been fitted to the hose so that they're orientated correctly to uh, to mount up to uh, to the caliper and the master cylinder so what I need to do is obviously fit them to the bike so let's get our banjo remembering to put a copper washer on either side then this end of the cable goes through this little bracket just here on the swing arm which is there just to keep it in place and stop it touching the exhaust or getting involved with the wheel and then what I need to do is offer the banjo up to the caliper it's a little bit awkward to get in it would have been easier if I took the exhaust off but obviously I'm not going to that length just to fit a banjo and then just put it, do it up finger tight and there we go. Right, now that one, this end, is obviously going to be around about there. And you can see how the orientation of the uh, banjo end, is, it's been, um, when it's been crimped in, has been um, put in the right angle so that it meets up nicely. So what I need to do next, obviously, it's going to go, it's, that's where it's going to be, on there like, like that. So what I need to do next is obviously mount this back up. So I need to get all my little springs back in position. This bottom one's going to be a bit of a pain. Oh, no, it went in quite easily. Right, so let's drop that down there like so. Get our... Oops, let's do it the right way around, that way. And then offer it up to the master cylinder. And then the rear set is going to sit just like so. Now, I've also given the uh, the reservoir a really good clean, and also the hose. I've got new uh, new hose clips for it. So what I'll do, I'll get them back in position, just like so. And that's going to fit on there like that. Right there. And there we go. So we've got the brake line in place. We've got the rubber hose that comes down from the reservoir in place. Just make sure all the springs are still on, which they are. And then 
obviously that's going to fit in there we need to get that little bolt in the back there and then the two bolts that hold the rear set to the frame um, these two bolts i'm going to put a little bit of blue loctite on them just to make sure that they don't wind out uh, because obviously that'll be bad um, and then once we've done that we can start filling the system what i'm going to do before i do that though when we go around just tighten up all the banjos and the bolts and then what i'll do i'll bring you back in once we're ready to fill the reservoir with fluid and start bleeding them through right then everything is tight the rear sets are tight the banjos on the uh, brake lines are all tight everything is done up tight and all the springs are connected etc etc right what i've got here is my brake fluid as um as you've maybe seen before i do like to transfer it into the into this jug it just makes it a little bit more manageable and um, easier to control when you're topping up things like this so i'm just going to top the reservoir up I'm not too concerned about getting it over the level at the minute because we are going to draw fluid through and there we go that is nice and full there we are right what i'm going to do next is i'm going to use my vacuum bleeding tool which again i've used countless times so what i need to do is move to the back of the bike here's the little here's the little bleed screw i need to get my in fact i'm going to take that little rubber cover off for the moment get my eight mil spanner on the bleed nipple and then connect up my tool push it on nice and snug build up a vacuum and then crack the tool up open and we should start seeing the level drop which it is so the level's going down because i'm drawing fluid through and close her off up the fluid I'm going to give it one more run through you can see we've got the fluid collected in here so we have drawn it through i'm going to give it one more just to make sure there's no bubbles in there we should be okay but cracker open watch the level oops just dropped it off let's do it again and the level's going down we're now at the upper mark, so I'm going to close it off. Remove the tool and try the brake. Oh, and that feels good. And as you can see, when I press the brake, it locks the wheel up nicely. So I'm happy with that. Right, what I need to do now is pop the cover back over the nipple, and that helps keep any rubbish out of the hole. Next, I'm gonna take my cover. I've given these a good clean off um, when I took them off, because they were pretty menky. Pop the rubber gasket into position. And then the cover back on one screw and two screws okay, get them started all right let me just go and grab my JIS screwdriver and I'll knit them down
they don't need to be grollied on just nipped up enough to gently squeeze the gasket and there we go and give the level a shake and as you can see it's just a fraction below the upper mark which I'm perfectly happy with and perfect and there we go that is the rear one done um, one thing I do want to mention here actually is when I was stripping this apart the rear master cylinder did not want to budge off of here these two bolts were allen headed and they were absolutely solid I used heat everything to try and get them off in the end I had to drill the heads off and then remove the studs um, with a set of grips um, so what I've done I've replaced them with socket heads um, and nuts on the back uh, and that's um, probably going to be easier to get off in the future if I ever want to do so because these allen headed bolts they do like to round out um, when they get old and a bit you know a bit aged um, these ones here I'm probably going to replace with stainless ones at some point anyway just to make them look more attractive if, if, uh, if nothing else anyway um, I'm digressing slightly so that is the rear all finished what we need to do now is move on to the front right then the front as before what I'm going to do I'm just going to take the cap off and then take all the fluid out with me uh, with me uh, little syringe just to help avoid making too much mess um, as I said before this isn't really necessary I could use a vacuum tool to suck it out if I wished um, I just prefer this way yeah and that brake fluid is actually pretty dirty so um, this was uh, a long time coming anyhow okay so let me get my syringe I'm gonna pop that around there so I don't get fluid on anything it doesn't want to be on i.e. anywhere other than inside here and suck it out and we're pretty much there yeah that's it pretty much empty close the lid so when I uh, disconnect the lines now all I'm going to lose out of the lines is what's in it I'm not, I'm not having the entire reservoir draining out um, onto the floor as well okay so now we've uh, now we've done that what we can do is we can move on to the actual light itself so um, with the front um, it's slightly different to the rear the rear was literally a direct replacement line um, and it was just a one for one swap what I've opted for with the front is a set of race lines. Now the, ra the race lines is two lines direct from the master cylinder. One line going down to this caliper and the other line going down to the other caliper. The factory setup has one line coming from the master cylinder to this caliper, a double banjo and then another shorter line going over the top of the mudguard to the other caliper. And that's the reason, that's the, that's the way that Suzuki decided to do it. They do this on uh, GSX-Rs, they do it on quite a few bikes, um, to be fair. I think they did it on Bandits as well, I can't remember, it's been a while since I had Bandit. Um, but I'm fairly sure that they do this on uh, quite a lot of their bikes. And, you know, it, it works. Um, I think it's a uh, cost-saving exercise as opposed to anything else. Um, because obviously then they do one of the lines they can make shorter and it doesn't cost them as much. Um, in my head, when you operate the brakes, this caliper has to operate first. The, the pads have to bite the disc before any fluid is then forced over this line to the other caliper. And as you can imagine, that means that this caliper is a, a fraction of a second after this one's operated. So um, what I've done is I've opted for the race lines as, as hell call them. Um, yeah, the race lines are two separate lines, one to each caliper. So let me go and get the lines out and we'll have a look at them. So here's the two lines. So as you can see, they're both the same length or very very similar um, one comes from the master cylinder to this caliper one goes from the master cylinder to the other caliper and yeah they're a direct uh, direct fit we just got new new banjos we've got a new double banjo because we need a double banjo up at the master cylinder and then a single banjo on each of the calipers so yeah pretty straightforward what we need to do first obviously is remove the uh, remove the old um, lines from the bike now this smaller this smaller line here 
goes through these little clips that are on the mudguard. And if you reach underneath the mudguard, you can feel a little like the little stud where it pokes through. And it's like a it's one of them spring <laughs> plastic clips that um, splits at the bottom where it goes into the hole. I'll, I'll show it once I get it out. I need to just push it out with my finger and it should come together and pop out. There we go. Yeah, it's just like that. You can see it goes around the hose and then once it's in the hole, it stays clamped. Um, so yeah, there's two of those, one on each side. So I need to get the one off this side as well. There we go. Now, obviously, this is going to leave a little hole on the back of the mudguard where these clips were. Um, the whole bike needs a spray anyway, so what I'll probably do is fill these in uh, and before painting, and uh, you'll never know. Um, this fender extender, I don't think that's standard. I'm fairly sure that's been added um, as an aftermarket item. I'm not 100% sure. I don't think this, because if it was, you'd thought that they'd have um, just made the whole mudguard longer. Um, so what I'll probably do again is make that part of the, uh, you know, blend it in, make it all one piece and then paint that as well at the same time. But anyway, I'm digressing. That's, uh, that's a job for uh, in the future. Um, this hose here goes into these little brackets. There's one there and there's another one up underneath the yoke. Um, so yeah, they, we'll pop them out and then what we'll do, we'll... Uh, Get the, uh, get the lines disconnected and make sure we catch all the fluid out of them. Right then, I've uh, pulled the line out of all the clips. Um, there's a little bolt holding the other bracket up underneath the yoke. I've taken the bolt out. The, uh, the, the, the actual bracket itself is quite well on the line. So I'll take that off the line once we uh, take the hose out. Um, what I'm gonna do now though is <sighs> crack off the banjo. And as you can see, there's a bit of fluid coming out. Take the uh, take the banjo bolt all the way out. There's three washers in this, one right by the caliper, one in between the two lines, and then another one at the top. And there we go. Recover all the washers. And there's the double banjo. Obviously working with the brakes is a really, really messy job. There's the washer that was between the two lines. Just give it a bit of a, give it a bit of a clean up. Right then. So that one can stay there for the moment. And now this one, we need to go around the other side of the bike and disconnect it from the other caliper. Okay, so here's the other end of this line. Get it, get it on there. Crack it off. Trying to catch all the fluid so it doesn't drip everywhere. I don't mind so much if it goes on the garage floor, even though that is painted. I don't really want to get it on the wheels if I can avoid it. And there we go. And that's the small line removed, along with its washers and the banjo and all that good stuff. So let's drop that down there and just give this a little clean up. go right what we need to do next is get up the top and remove the banjo from the master cylinder next thing we want to do is remove this one from the from the master cylinder so plenty of tissue around the bike making sure that we're not going to drip anything on the paintwork if you're precious about it obviously I'm getting this bike repainted but that doesn't mean that I want to get it covered in brake fluid anyway 
um, and there we go crack it off take the single banjo out there's the first washer there's the banjo drop that down there okay all right what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the hose down this way and there we are there's the front hose now this is the bracket I was talking about I do want that so I'm gonna pull the hose out of it and there we go so let me drop that down there where it's gonna drain into the tissue pick up all the banjos and stuff throw them over there and the double right so a bit of a clean up because we have spilt a little bit nothing too bad obviously that help was helped by draining the uh, master cylinder out first the uh, the reservoir so we're not pouring fluid all over the place right so obviously what we want to do now is fit the first of the uh, of the brake lines so what we're going to do is again look at the orientation of the banjos and that one is going to fit onto there let me get that up there it's going to fit onto the caliper like so in that kind of orientation and that's the way we want to do it so these little plastic sleeves go into these brackets like that and they help route the cable so what we need next is our little banjos for the bottom here we need a single banjo and two washers one washer on one side one on the other like so that one started okay so we'll come back to tools in that in a minute and then what we need to do is feed the hose up to the master cylinder where it's going to sit on there like so obviously with the double but we'll do that once we've got the other line up as well because they both go on um, together so what I need to do before I do that get this bracket put that onto the hose and then bolt this back up underneath the yoke right that is the hose rooted and as you can see it's up here by the master cylinder the other end the uh, the banjo is done up nice and tight and the little collars the little plastic collars are sat nicely into their little brackets so what we need to do next is obviously move around to the other side and get the other side done okay then round the other side we've got, a, got our other banjo pop the washer on put it into the hose and fit into the caliper again what i've done i've just checked the top just to make sure that the orientation of the other banjo um, will be correct at the master cylinder and then what i'm going to do is just knit that up just to compress the two washers and this little collar here is also going to go up to that little bracket that we fitted before um, there isn't any other provision for it uh, on this bike because obviously this bike was never designed to have uh, two full length lines like so um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to put a tie wrap around it just to hold it in position and that should be um, more than adequate right what I need to do next is get up to the master cylinder and fit the double banjo all right then at the top we've got a double banjo and there should be three washers for that so first one through the first hose 
then there's another washer between two hoses and then another one where it meets the master cylinder and then we can screw that down we'll get the bolt in and then we'll arrange the orientation of the hoses to make sure that they're that they're all good okay I think that they look okay they don't actually contact each other they're all right I'll do them like that I think get the tool just nip the bolt just to compress the washers There we go. That is them all installed. Take our tissue away now for the moment. Give everything a little wipe down. And there we go. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure that the hoses themselves don't foul on anything. No, they all look absolutely spot on. All right, next thing we need to do, get some fluid in it, start bleeding it up. Right, what I'll do, I'll get the tissue around the reservoir to catch any drips. And again, I'm going to top it up, overfilling it, um, because obviously we're going to pour something through. Plenty for the moment. Just pushing a few bubbles out of the master cylinder up fluid. Right. Let me get me uh, let me get my bleed pump out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack off the bleed nipple and suck the fluid down, down the line, and get on yet get any of the air out. Okay, let's crack the bleed nip off and pour some fluid through. Keeping an eye on the reservoir, we should see the fluid start to drop down, which it is. And we're getting fluid in the in my little cup here. Close that nipple up and move the tool. That one should be okay. We'll check it in a moment, but what I'm going to do, go around the other side and carry out the same process. First, I'm going to put a little bit more fluid in the reservoir. Pulling the fluid through the caliper, I can see the level going down in the reservoir. Obviously, you don't want it to go too low because otherwise you'll be sucking in air. I'm getting fluid in here. I can see it coming down the hose. All right, that should be it. Let's remove the tool. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to go around the other side, give the Breaks a little squeeze. Yeah, still a little bit spongy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep doing it till such time as I get a good feel at the lever. Yeah, the, the, they're, they're operating, but the lever is a little bit spongy. So there's a little bit of air still in the system. So I'm going to repeat 
the whole process, keep doing that till such time as I get a nice firm lever. Okay, there we are, that's much better. I gave it one more pass on both calipers and it's, it's absolutely perfect now, it's absolutely bang on. I'm well happy with that. What I've done again, I've topped up the fluid to the upper line. So what I need to do now is pop the diaphragm and a little plastic spacer in. Refit the cap. Now I can remove the tissue out of the way. <coughs> Refit the screw and tap it in the rub. There we go. That's the brake lines all completed. So now we have the brake lines, um, hell, hell performance braided brake lines front and rear, and that now matches the clutch line as well. So they're all good. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Not a difficult task. Um, it's just uh, a little bit patient, and it can be a little bit mucky, as you can see here. Got a little bit of brake fluid on the tyre, which I'm going to clean off and then I need to go around and just mop up any like brake fluid on the caliper just clear it all up and uh, make good anyway that was a pretty simple pretty simple job not too taxing um, but it will make a hell of a hell of a difference I mean the brake fluid that was in this bike lord knows when that was last changed it was pretty dark and horrible so a brake fluid change alone would make a massive difference to the braking ability of the bike. Um, the hoses that came off, they'll have, they'll have probably have been a uh, factory original. This is a um, 2004 registered 03 model. Um, so they've been on there a little while. So, you know, they're, they're pushing 18 years old. And I think it's um, off the top of my head. I think rubber hoses are supposed to be replaced every four years. So, you know, um, have they been done? I very much, I very much doubt it. Um, the Hell Performance braided lines, however, they do come with a lifetime warranty, so they should never need replacing ever. Um, so, uh, so that's good for uh, you know a little bit of future proofing. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run around the bike, just make sure that there's no leaks um, before I call it uh, before I call it good and tick it off. Anyway, guys, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give it a like. Um, you know, leave a comment below. And don't forget to come and join me on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'll see you all again for the very next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.